Hello everyone. Welcome to my live stream. I'm back at work on my February Griffin illustration. And I have been thinking hard about the contrast between the different elements because I want to make sure that from a distance everything stands out the way it should. That, that the most important elements stand out. And, and that's something that I think I didn't do as good a job as I wanted to with my January Griffin. I didn't go far enough with applying shadow or making things darker so that it would stand out when you were farther away from it. So I think that these are fine with the amount of shadow I've put on the background, on the nest, the flowers seem to be standing out, at least so far. I haven't put any actual shading on the flowers, so it might change if I end up shading the flowers too much, then I might need to add more to the nest to make sure they stand out better. But the thing I've been focusing on more is this part of the griffin, the black plumage. And sort of the arm here, too, because it's pretty much the same color. Because with the shadow the way it is in the nest now, I think it it looks fine, like from a more realistic point of view. But it's actually quite close. The darkness of this is pretty close to the darkness of this. So what really standing out right now is of course this part the back half is standing out just fine but the red breast of the robin is standing out and the beak is standing out but this is sort of blending in to the background but as I was thinking of it I can't do it the same way as with this where I just make the background darker because this is actually really dark this is almost black overall. So I think what I actually need to do is work on this area some more and make it much darker than the actual shadow areas so that it will stand out. It'll stand out in a, a sort of reverse way where it's standing out because it's much darker than the back. So that's what I'm going to work on today is adding more shadow to this black plumage and then if I feel satisfied with that I'll probably move on to making sure to shade these other areas so they're not forgotten. Uh, I don't remember exactly which color I use. I think probably this one. That looks pretty close. I've got my reference images up. So I can I need to turn my screen a little bit. Yeah, it just looks pretty dark. Not much color. Okay, I'm going to stick with this reference for now. Whew, okay, any colors that I've swatched already that would be good for shadow on this. Honestly, none of them seem dark enough. Maybe this one, but even that is like, it's so close to this already. It's just like a different shade, but the same amount of dark, so I think I need to do a swatch. Something really dark. I mean, there's just this black one. Maybe I should just go all the way to the darkest possible thing. Let's see what it looks like. Yeah. 
you haven't been watching any of my other streams or videos, I'm using Ink Tense Pencils by either Derwent or Dervent. Maybe it's both depending on where you are, but <laughs> it's they're the best watercolor pencils I've ever found. And I didn't even realize they were watercolor pencils at first. I just thought they were some sort of cool, regular colored pencil. But this is what I always wanted uh, watercolor pencils to be. All the other brands I've ever tried are super light and just... They're just pathetic. <laughs> I don't like using them. But I love using these. So what I generally do is on the dr on dry parts, depending on whether I want a, an effect like this where there's some texture, or if I just want a, a flat, so like here, you can't see the texture. So I might apply it really lightly or more heavily or make a really hard mark. But after you apply it, that's when you add water. You can also add water first to the paper and then put the pencil down on that. But that's a totally different effect, so you got to be careful with it. Since this griffin is in a tree, it's going to be shaded from most hard sources of light. So there shouldn't be any really hard shadows in this whole piece. So that's what I'm thinking of as I apply this. So let's go to the water. I'm going to use a larger brush. This is my most medium brush out of the options I have available right now on my desk. So all, all these pictures of robins that I have as reference. The head is always so much darker than the feathers in the back. So I think for the head of this griffin I just need to make it almost completely black. Really got to make good progress on this in the coming weeks. Because if I don't have it completely finished by, I'd say, probably the end of July at the latest, it's going to be a mad rush to get it done in time to submit it to the Western Idaho Fair art exhibit. And I don't like rushing. <laughs> like, take my time and be like, whenever I'm ready, I'm ready. But I can't do that, so I've been working on this on and off all year and actually started it last year. So, hopefully, that's been on enough time that I'll, I'll have this done.
I love round brushes because you can go through here and cover a huge area with water, but then you put it on its tip and you can get really tiny fine lines out of it at the same time. You don't have to change brushes. Ooh! Yes, that's starting to look much more like a robin. Different reference image. Now yeah, that one's the same thing. The head is so dark. It's like okay. Well, let's see. So the body is curving down. The only shadows that there's really going to be in this piece are gentle ones just to show shape, to show that it's three-dimensional. So I think what I have to do, because none of my reference images are exactly like this, like from the side like this, and definitely not with a really generalized light source like I'm doing. I'm just going to have to use my imagination here while also looking at the reference to make sure I don't overdo it in areas where so like the edges of all these feathers it has nothing to do with the shadows that are happening it has to do with the coloration of the bird and they they have much lighter edges and on these ones it's like a whole half of the feather is much lighter So I gotta keep that in mind while also using my imagination to get a gradation from darker shadow down here up. up. So I'm just gonna start by filling in the lowest feathers. They should be the most in shadow. Stop there for now. Oh, I should use a smaller brush than this.
this is definitely what I needed to do here. This is great contrast. I guess I don't have to be too careful about the edges of these feathers because they're so small that I can just cut the paper when I'm all done to get to bring back the white or even put on a little line of wash, white wash or something. The breeze just started up outside. Sounds so relaxing. I'm glad I opened my window today. Sounds so nice in the trees. Switch to a larger brush, slightly larger, for this area.
I was feeling so ginky until I started streaming and just suddenly got so tired. It's because without my music playing, because I can't pay attention, I can't stream and also listen to music. But it's like there's no music playing, but there's a nice relaxing sounds from outside. Even the fans on my computer sound relaxing. And my Lamps are making it really warm, which always make me sleepy in the middle of the day. Though at night, if it's warm, I get awake. I don't get it. It's warm and bedtime. Can't go to sleep. I've been sleeping super well recently, ever since I went back to not allowing myself to have my phone in my room. Just instantly. My heart rate, my resting, my average resting heart rate also dropped even further. Like I just, I'm sleeping so much more soundly that even that. Even my heart has calmed down even more. I already have an extremely low resting heart rate. I had this doctor who like wanted to play Dr. House and was like reading my low resting heart rate as a mystery symptom and she was like oh you're asymptomatic and I'm like that means I'm well. <laughs> There's nothing else wrong with me. Because there wasn't, there was nothing else wrong with me other than my triglycerides were a little high, not even really high, a little high, and that made total sense with my diet at the time. And since then, my I've improved my diet, and and I have a new doctor too. Because that doctor, I think I probably wasn't the only one she was playing doctor with. It's like she wasn't being a proper doctor. She was just trying to find things wrong with people when they were fine. At least that was my experience because she sent me for extremely expensive tests several times in the same year and they all came back showing that I was just fine but she wasn't convinced and then at the end of the year I got a notification that she was no longer with the medical group or whatever. <laughs> like, oh my god. <sighs> I was glad though. I was gonna find a new doctor either way because I was so sick of it. So I went in once because I was having exercise headaches and of course I looked up the problem myself online first but you know you shouldn't you shouldn't uh, be a, an internet doctor or whatever, so the headache, the headaches were really bad. So I went in and made an appointment to verify, and she was like, oh, this must have to do with your low resting heart rate. And I'm like, are you kidding me? Headaches don't have anything to do with that. I know I'm not a doctor, but if anything, it would have to do with blood pressure, when my blood pressure is fine. She sent me in for another freaking test. It cost tons of money. And of course, nothing was found out. I got no no recommendations about what I should try or any medication that I could take to see if it helps or anything. And eventually the headaches went away on their own, so I seriously wasted my time and money. My current doctor is much better. When I explained that that had happened, 
And then I explain to her that I exercise every day. I go to the gym and do hour-long, high-intensity classes, and I'm always walking and running. Well, I haven't been running recently because of my foot, but... She was like, yeah, I don't see anything wrong with a low resting heart rate if you're that active. Especially since everything else about my health is perfect. So my low resting heart rate is just because I'm that fit. My cardiovascular system is that fit and my heart just doesn't need to beat that hard that often in order to do its job. So now my, oh, I mean, it's all according to Fitbit, but according to Fitbit, my average resting heart rate for the last two days is only 41 beats per minute. It's quite low. My new tea making alarm clock is fabulous. It's just as good as I imagined. The only real problem with it is that if you need to set the alarm for something other than an actual hour, so something other than like 4 a.m., 5 a.m., actually a.m., p.m. doesn't matter because it's an analog clock, but you need to set it for say 4.30 which is what I wanted to set it for it's like good luck because like I said it's an analog clock and the face is an oval for whatever reason I guess they wanted to the whole thing is like a big rectangle like this and I guess they wanted to fit more clock in but it's like, I was like, I hope this is halfway between this point and this point. And it wasn't, because it started making tea 15 minutes early. But, whatever. That amount of time probably isn't that big of a difference overall. Now my thing is, I need to... I need to get in bed earlier. There's always so much stuff that I don't do over the course of the day when I have plenty of time and then at the end of the day comes and I'm like, oh crap, I didn't do this or this or this or this. Or I need to do these things and so I spend a bunch of time getting all the last minute stuff done. Gotta somehow work with myself so that I'm not so last minute with everything. It goes back to, I hate being rushed. I just like to do things at my pace. Do things when I'm ready to do them. Like, if I didn't have any other obligations or any, any other, anything to worry about as far as time, I would really prefer to just do whatever I want all day long until I get tired and then go to sleep and then sleep however long I want and wake up and then do whatever I want you know just keep doing that but I know that I would end up having a super crazy schedule all the time if I actually allowed myself to do that like I'd be like Staying up until 3 a.m. and then I'd go to sleep and then I'd sleep until noon and then I'd stay up until 6 a.m. the next day and then I would sleep until like 2 p.m. and it would be like that and then it'd be like eventually I would like stay up 24 hours because I was up so late that the sun came up and it woke me up again and I end up staying up all day. That doesn't doesn't work. 
that would work if I lived in a bubble and I didn't have anything else that I wanted or needed to do. But definitely doesn't work in the real world where I want to have friends and I want to go to events and I want to do stuff. Like I love going to the gym. I love going to my classes. But they're always at a specific time, so I've got to work around that. <laughs>